Saturation is such an important part of color grading and it's often overlooked. So in this video, we're gonna go into saturation. I'm gonna talk about the different methods that there are to apply saturation. And we're also gonna go through some of the common mistakes that people make when applying saturation. How rich an image feels or how rich certain tones feel or how consistently rich skin tones feel across a whole project. It's all really, really important. The biggest thing that I want to talk to you about here is the two different ways that saturation is applied to an image, which we're going to talk about using these terms, additive and subtractive. And I'm sure you've heard this if you've watched a bunch of YouTube videos about this because it is spoken about a lot. So first, what are these common saturation mistakes that I was talking about, right? We don't want to be making these mistakes and they kind of look something like this, just cranking your saturation slider, just cranking it up without really measuring your adjustments. So I guess the common mistake is not measuring your adjustments. Saturation isn't just something that we should just continue to do in our workflow, just mindlessly adding it. Saturation needs to be something that's quite considered. And I think this is where it's overlooked. You kind of need to measure, cool, this is how the skin tones should be in terms of saturation levels across my project. The other mistake, like I said, is not being quite considered when you're adding your saturation. So basically just not really using different types of saturation methods. It's just using the one that you know that you use all the time. The point of having so many different types of saturation methods is because they work really well in different scenarios. So for some scenarios, it's best to use the color boost. For instance, we can get better results by playing with different methods. Reds become oversaturated really quickly because digital cameras really pick up that red signal quite a lot. So we actually need to manage those reds to make sure that they look good because they can ping and then they don't look so good and it kind of makes your whole project feel a little bit artificial. So that's something that needs to be considered as well and thought about. And then another mistake is also undersaturating images. You can bring a lot of life to an image by having some saturation in the image. A lot of the time, there's a lot of contrast in our images so it feels quite saturated as well. So I think that's probably also another mistake, not understanding the relationship between contrast and saturation. If there's more contrast within your image, like you know, dark and, and light, the perceived saturation is also gonna be much higher. Those pixels are gonna feel a lot more saturated. So we kind of need to understand that relationship as well. And the last mistake would probably be just globally saturating images as a whole. Look, this works for lots of different people and lots of different projects and things like that. But on the most part, I am basically toying with the look, toying with a whole bunch of different aspects when I'm color grading and then pulling back saturation or pushing saturation in certain different places. So I would definitely suggest not just adding saturation to your image as a whole, but being specific about where saturation is being pulled back and where it's being added. And we're gonna talk about that just now. Let's talk about the different ways to add saturation. So the first saturation method is the saturation slider. And this is probably the one that we are all most familiar with. It's found in our primaries color wheels and you basically just come down here and you can just yank this guy all the way up. But you don't want to do that. And the reason why is because I'm going to show you here in the vector scope, you're going to be able to see it, right? So if I pull that up, you will see how all those colors are basically just getting pulled apart. And so if you look at our image up here, everything just doesn't look so good. But do you see how bright everything got? So I'm going to turn that off and on again. So not only are we receiving saturation, but we're also receiving some luminance. Basically, it adds saturation by pushing up the RGB values and it's additive. So that's why the luminance is quite effective. So all of these little dots, these little weird rectangles here, they are correlating to these color squares here. That's the inf information being displayed. As I turn that off, you can see how those are shifting quite a lot because the luminance values are being shifted. So I just, I don't like that with the saturation method. It's not something that I'm looking for. Let's go to color boost and I'm gonna add 20 in the color boost. Color boost works in a way that saturates from the most desaturated part of the image first and then saturates the rest. So it kind of works from inwards outwards. Let me show you an example of that. As our image is being saturated, the information in our image is going to go further away from the center of this crosshair right here. If I turn that off and then turn back our saturation slider, you will see that when I turn it off and back on again, it kind of just expands right all together. But when I turn the color boost on, you'll probably notice that the saturation from the center expands more. But you can see how the information responds very, very differently. Although it's still a very similar type of saturation method being an additive method. If you watch our parade here, we're still getting a jump in all of those color squares. If you're finding that your saturation is not really affecting a certain part of your image that you feel really needs it, needs a bit of a boost, 
this is how you can you can basically do that. Let me make a new still album and take from our saturation slide. I'm just going to take a still because now we're getting into a little bit more of our subtractive method. So the way subtractive saturation happens is very similar to how saturation is actually perceived in real life. When reds in film, for instance, are more saturated, they aren't necessarily brighter, they actually get deeper. And that's why we call it subtractive saturation because they get deeper and probably less bright. They get more dense. And that's the word. Density. I'm sure you've heard that word being thrown around quite a bit. So I'm not going to go into the full technical thing of how it works and why it works and all of that kind of stuff. All we need to know is that subtractive saturation methods make our colors feel more dense and don't affect our luminance as much. So let's do some subtractive saturation with our HDR wheels. So you go to your HDR color palette or your tool set, I guess, go to global and then under saturation, basically pull that slider up. I'm going to go to 1.30 and let's see what that looks like before and after, before and after. Let's see what it looks like on our scope, before and after. Definitely still a bit of a jump. It's not true subtractive saturation, but it definitely works more towards that end. It's still a very pleasing way to add saturation. So I'm gonna show you what it looked like when we had our saturation slider. So I'm gonna pull it slightly over the red here. This side is the saturation slider. This side is the HDR global. So. That's HDR global. So even though our colors did jump up there, our color squares did jump up in luminance, these are still much denser tones than on the right-hand side. So on the saturation slider side, you can see that it actually like, just feels artificial. It just doesn't feel as great, whereas on this side it gets rich, not necessarily just saturated. So that's what we're looking for, right? So that's with the HDR global wheel, quite a nice way to add saturation. Let's go HSV. Now, if you don't know how to do HSV, I'm gonna show you quite quickly. All you gotta do is right click on your node, go down to color space, change that to HSV, and HSV stands for Hue Saturation Value. Basically, we're separating that node into three different channels, and then we're gonna turn off two of those channels. So we're gonna go to channels, turn off channel one, which is hue, and then turn off channel three, which is value. And now what we do with our color wheels is only going to affect saturation. So it's quite strange because now we add saturation with our gain and our gamma wheels. So we're going to push our gain up. Let's go somewhere there. I'm definitely adding a lot of saturation here. And then I'm going to pull my gamma up slightly as well, somewhere there. So that was before and that's after. That is the saturation with the saturation slider, saturation with HSV, saturation with the slider, with HSV. If you really look at these tones, you will notice a massive difference in the density. Look at the reds. The reds look so much better on this side than they do on this side. To me, this feels artificial and it just doesn't look so great, whereas that red looks quite filmic and really beautiful to me. You would say they're different blues. You gen like genuinely, you would say those are two different blues because they, they kind of are. So yeah, these are things to take into consideration and that's why HSV is a really good saturation method. The only thing that I would say, rather just use your saturation slider to desaturate because it doesn't work the same way, right? I just want to explain how these two work. So gain kind of works uh, just in terms of how it saturates, very similar to how your saturation slider works in, in terms of like it just globally saturates your information. So your information kind of just expands altogether. But when you use your... Gamma wheel, it kind of does it in a similar way to your color boost, so saturates from the most desaturated part outward. So I kind of do a mix of both to kind of balance the image out quite nicely, and I think that works very well. So I turn off HSV, look at our parade, turn HSV back on. Do you see how minor the jumps are in terms of our color squares and where they go? In fact, a lot of them are going down and some of them are going slightly up, but we still have a very similar saturation level across our image. I love saturation using the HSV because it works beautifully and it works so well, but in some cases, it's not the best choice. So let's go on to the next method, which is using color slice, which can be found right here next to our curves. So you just pull up the saturation slider and that's how you add the saturation. Nice and simple. There's no need to go in and create nodes and like set up nodes. That's before with nothing and that's with the color slice. Again, you can see those reds are becoming more dense, which is really nice. There's still a lot of density within our color slice. It's definitely not as much as with our HSV, and I'll show you that 
right now. So a very similar amount of saturations, but you can see that our HSV is much deeper than our color slice. It's a lot more dense. So if you are trying to find a good middle ground, I would say that the HDR global wheel is a good saturation method, but also the color slice is a great saturation method because you still get a deeper, more dense saturation, but it doesn't necessarily need to be as dense as HSV. HSV is, is very dense. The last methods that I'm going to talk about is more secondary kind of saturation methods. These are things that I think need to be used within our color grading a lot more than we do. So we've spoken about how to basically saturate your image as a whole with all those different methods. There isn't, it's not selective saturation, it's saturating everything. But what we also need is to be able to be quite selective with our saturation methods. Hue versus saturation. Where we really get power from this tool is by being able to combine it. So I'm going to turn my HSV on and then let's say the saturation of our greens needs to be much lower. So I'm going to make a selection here and then broaden and widen that selection, which is really important here, and then pull down in the saturation of those greens. So before and after, before and after. I mean, we know how to do this, right? But the point that I'm trying to get at here is that we don't just add saturation to an image as a whole, especially if you're trying to create a unique look. So the way that I would use this in a project quite often, actually, is by almost deciding on a saturation value across a whole project. So for instance, I will work it into my look that saturations of greens are pulled back quite a bit if that's what it needs to be for the project or reds are pulled back and I'll basically work that into my look. You can also use our color warper here. So I like to go to color warper and then go to 12 down here. So I've got a lot more like tentacles, let's call them. And then you can basically pull down on your greens like this. What I wouldn't do here is add saturation using the color warper because it's basically going to do it in an additive way. Um, as well, but sometimes you've you've got to, and I understand that too. So just be quite selective with how you do this. But this is how we do selective saturation. And the best way I would suggest doing that, if you're using the color warper, select a point like I just did there, and then use the saturation slider down here to desaturate, because otherwise you're going to change the hue value by accident as well, and you probably don't want to do that. The last thing that I want to leave you with, though, is how to measure your saturations because I spoke about that as a mistake but let's talk about how to actually measure it. So if you go to your vector scope which is where we measure our saturation and then make sure that you have selected qualify over here. In your scope go to the ellipsis tool or the drop down menu there and select display qualify focus. Now when you hover over the skin tone you can see where that skin tone is sitting on our vector scope. So right now it's sitting quite high up on that skin tone level. So what I'm going to do is pull down on my saturation of my reds, pull down in the saturation of my oranges and back down on the saturation on my reds. And now when I go up there, you can see where it's sitting, which is quite cool because I can now go, okay, cool. The rest of the image is looking pretty saturated. Now I know where that's sitting. And this is just an example, obviously. Take a mental note of where your skin tones sit within your vector scope. And then for the rest of the project, you basically pull back saturation or whatever it's going to be, however it's going to work out for you um, in your project and your given scenario. But that's kind of how you can measure your saturation. My favorite is definitely using HSV. I love filmic looking images. So I love the denser reds and the denser tones that I get from the HSV. Color slice is something that I use very often as well because it's so easy to use. It's just so quick and it's kind of like a really good middle ground in my opinion. Hope you enjoyed this video guys and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you can get more content like this. I have a lot of videos talking about color grading and breaking down things in DaVinci Resolve so have a look and I'll see you in the next one.